Let's make a game! How do we set up a main menu or title screen in Pico 8? Now, this is not the only way to do it, but we think it is a good place to start because it is simple to read and easy to remember how it works. Different parts of a game, like the intro, main menu, and the gameplay itself, are called game states. And we can build something that controls the game states, called a state machine. You should already know that a Pico 8 game has two main functions, underscore update and underscore draw. Update handles the game logic, and draw handles what is on the screen. Now wouldn't it be nice if we could have an update and a draw function for each state of our game? So imagine one set of update and draw for the main menu, and another set for the actual game. Then we could simply change which one is active at certain points of the game. Well, that is exactly what we are going to do. Let's start by organizing our code. This first tab can be where we initialize the whole game. So this is where we will put the underscore init function. And our variables inside of that. The second tab can hold the main underscore update and underscore draw functions, which we will actually turn into our state machines in just a second. This organization stuff is all really up to you. You could put each state in its own tab, so like have this tab for main menu and this tab for game. Or instead, make this tab hold all the update functions and this tab hold all the draw functions. This way has some benefits, so let's stick with this. So now we will kind of work our way backwards. Since this is the draw tab, let's make a new draw function for each game state. So we will want function draw menu and function draw game. Then we will make matching functions for those in the update tab. Function update menu and function update game. Now all we have to do is create a variable to keep track of which game state should be active. So let's go back to init and create a variable that I will simply name scene. State is the technical term, but I think scene is easier to understand for others reading my code. We could make this variable hold a number, but then we would have to remember something like 0 is the intro, 1 is the main menu, and so on. So to make it more readable, I will make this a word, and the word will change to match the game state. Simple, logical, and obvious to anyone who reads it. Whatever we set this variable here will be the starting game state. So maybe if I make an intro, I'd want this to be intro. But for now, I only have a main menu, so I'll set this to menu. And so when I start this whole game, the first scene will be the main menu. The last thing we need to build is the state machine itself. And now that we have all the pieces of the puzzle, this part is really easy. So we go to the main functions, underscore update and underscore draw. Inside update, all we need to do is check if our scene variable is set to menu. Then it should run the update menu function. And remember how a function works. It is just code that is written somewhere else, and when we call it like this, that code will run as if it were written right here. That's it. We are just telling the main update and draw functions to run our specific game state functions based on which one we choose to be active, and we do that by changing this variable that I named scene. I bet the light bulbs just went off, and you can take it from here, but I'll finish filling this in in case you want to actually see this in action. So, for each game state we create, we just add an else if to this check. And then we do the same thing in draw. Let's just read through this to make sure we understand what is happening. Pico8 will automatically run these two main functions, underscore update and underscore draw. Then both of them will be checking scene to know which game state we set it to. 
And based on that, it will run one of our specific update or draw functions as if that function's code is the only code written right here. Pretty simple, right? But if that is at all confusing, check out nerdyteachers.com for a more detailed explanation, and we are happy to answer any questions in the comments. Now to see all of this in action, I'm going to have to build some sort of main menu and game, but we'll just keep it super simple. So, for the main menu screen, let's start with the draw menu function. First, I'll clear the screen. Then I'm just going to print the words press X to start and position that near the middle of the screen. Then in the update menu function, I need to check if button press X. Then we want to start the game, right? Watch how easy this is to change the game state now. Scene equals game. That's all. But now we need something in the game scene. So, real quick and simple, let's make a player sprite. Notice it's in sprite number one. Now we can go to the draw game function, first clear the screen again, and draw the sprite, number one, at some x and y variables so we can move the sprite around. Let's just make sure those variables are set in the beginning. All right, and now we can update the player in the update game function. This code is what we call the simple movement. You can learn all about how it works at nerdyteachers.com. Check the description for the exact links. Now from inside the actual game scene, you'll probably want a game over scene or a win scene, or depending on your game, maybe different levels are different scenes. But eventually, somewhere, you will probably want to return to the main menu scene. So since I'm not building all those other scenes yet, I'm just going to simulate returning to the main menu like this. If button press X again, but this time it's while inside the game scene. And then we just change the game state back to the main menu. Remember how easy it is? Scene equals menu. All done. Let's try it out. Starts in the menu, pressing X now. And it opens the game where we can move our player around. And if I press X again, we are back in the menu. Bam, just like that, we have working game states and a simple but awesome main menu. There are all sorts of possibilities from here, so get creative and have fun. We are Nerdy Teachers. Talk to us in the comments and subscribe to show us you want more.